By far the largest building in town is the courthouse. It's in the center of town, the first thing you see when you drive in. Out front, two brick staircases lead up to the doors, framing a towering obelisk topped by a statue of a Confederate soldier. This is the setting for what many thought would be the next television sensation after the O.J. trial. Court TV was in vogue. It was brand new. They basically laid their golden egg with that. That's Johnson Britt, the prosecutor in the Green trial. And, oh, this is the next big celebrity trial, not because it's Mr. Jordan, but because it's Michael's dad. And so when the media converged, right here. I mean, it looked like you were broadcasting the Super Bowl out there in the parking lot because there were satellite trucks set up everywhere. Reporters on every um, corner, cameras were in the hallways. Don't get back, huh? Tell you what, the audio clip certainly set the scene on this week's Follow the Truth. Amanda Lamb is setting the scene for the trial of Daniel Green. Of course, that's a man accused of killing Michael Jordan's father. Amanda, welcome back. Thank you for joining us and walking us through this. So Green's trial happened just months after the OJ case, which was also another national attention media getter. But the situation in Robinson County was much different than that. What do you think drew people to the courthouse? Just looking at that video, it's incredible. It was. I mean, they called it uh, basically the Super Bowl of Robeson County. You had so many people from all over the country. They all wanted to get a glimpse of Michael Jordan. But of course, Michael Jordan never attended this trial. Another thing that was different about this trial versus the OJ trial is that there were no cameras in the courtroom. So people were hungry for information. This day and age, we stream everything, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody gets to see the trial as it happens. Back then, because they didn't have a camera in this courtroom, people had to go to the courthouse. So literally, people, just members of the public, descended upon this little town, Lumberton, North Carolina, this small town courthouse, to watch this trial. And of course, you know, it was a packed courtroom. In addition to the media, there were members of the public. And then people outside were just waiting for news about what was happening. Again, all because it was a celebrity trial in a way. It was the it was the father of Michael Jordan. And there were two public defenders in this case. What kind of challenges did they face going into trial? You know, they had a huge challenge, Micaiah, because this trial was about such a high-profile case. It had been in the news for years. The crime happened in 1993. The trial happens in 1996. And, and in general, people had convicted Daniel Green in the public eye. And so they were going in basically behind the eight ball already, trying to convince a jury of 12 people who had seen all this news coverage, who had listened to this case for years, that Daniel Green was innocent. It's fascinating. And as the trial began, the state ended up bringing in a witness that would tell jurors where the weapon came from. And what were some of the issues, particularly with that person's testimony? Yeah, that, this was a big issue. So the weapon was found by investigators in the home of Daniel Green's mother. It was found in a shop vac. The weapon was never conclusively connected to the crime. The ballistics were inconclusive. But they did figure out that that gun came from a robbery, a previous robbery. And the person who went on the stand, he was the, he was the guy working at the convenience store. He said, yeah, Larry Demery, who's Daniel Green's co-defendant, I saw him. And they said, oh, well, who was the other guy? And he said, you know, it was a young black man. And he said, well, can you identify him? Daniel Green's in the courtroom. And he said, no, they all look alike. So basically, that really was a big blow for the prosecution in that they couldn't connect Daniel Green to this crime where the gun came from. And Daniel has unequivocally said, I was not there. I had nothing to do with that. That was Larry Demery. And by the way, Larry Demery was living with me in my mother's trailer at the time that this gun was found. And it was very likely in his mind that he could have put it there. This is, as you can see, very fascinating. I want to thank you, Amanda, and say congratulations. She is really topping the charts with the Follow the Truth podcast. You can find it on our website, WREL.com.